Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're going to take a closer look at the software on the Amazon Kindle Fire. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So when you power on the device you get the Amazon lock screen which just slides over with your finger there. It does have some information on it such as the time and the date and you notice that the, the screensaver there, the, the wallpaper in the background m rotates as you turn an, the device on and off and unlock it back and forth. Moving into the primary view from which you'll uh, use the Amazon Kindle Fire day to day, we've got the carousel here which shows kind of all the apps that you've opened recently. You can see I was in the, the Nook tools here, uh, web browser, etc., etc. And then it also has items in here that you may not have opened recently but may have in your Kindle Fire or rather your Amazon library available to download. You can tap those items and, and view them. If you scroll down here, this is your favorites kind of bookshelf and you can add items to those bookshelves by simply tapping and holding and then you get an option here to add to favorites and then vice versa you can tap and hold on an item down here and remove from favorites or remove from the device content that is listed here that is not let's say um, let me find a item here so this video here I can add it to my favorites, but I can't remove it from the device because it's not actually installed on the device. It's just something that was watched the Amazon video system. Across the top here, we've got the newsstand, which connects to the Amazon's. Uh, all of these items here connect to Amazon's back end, uh, whether it be the newsstand, books, music, video, docs, apps, uh, the web, including the web because the web uses the Silk browser. The newsstand is specifically for magazine style articles. Uh, I'm sorry, not articles, but magazines in general. Books are for obviously the Kindle books that you can get either purchasing them through the store here or even on the web and being able to save them and download them to this device. Same thing with the rest of these. Music for music obviously, video for the video you store on the device plus the video you want to use through Amazon Prime service. It does not connect the video for Netflix for example. You still have to go into apps and find Netflix for that. Docs are files that you've put on the device that are files like in my case I've put a couple of books here that are a book that I've got on the device that I've loaded as a Mobi file that shows up here in the docs. And then apps is the app store. Uh, it shows all of your apps in, that you have in the tray and then it also has these little arrowed apps here which are apps that you can download because you've already purchased them in some fashion from the Amazon store. Web browser which we'll come back to in a minute is the Silk web browser which I really haven't found to be terribly faster than any other web browser that I've used on an Android device. Up here at the top, if you top, tap the left hand side, which in the unboxing we couldn't get to do anything, that's because if there's not a notification up here, you won't get the notification bar. It won't, won't appear if you don't have something to see up here. And as you can see, I've downloaded the uh, Kindle update just to show you as an example of, uh, of an item for a notification. And I can clear all of those and then the notification bar will pop up and it won't come back down again unless there's something else there. If you tap on this side, then you get your settings menu. You can lock the screen orientation, change the volume up and down, brightness, Wi-Fi, force of synchronization, and if you go under more, then you get a pretty typical Android menu. It is missing some items, for example, the ability to be able to change your own keyboard, uh, but there's ways around that. Just note that you know this is where you're going to find information like your battery life and how much storage space you have available. Be able to toggle on and off the ability to install apps from outside of the Amazon sources. Down at the bottom we've got the home menu, the back button, and then if you're in a item that uses let's say a um, menu then you can tap here and get your menu option as well. Let's go ahead and open up the browser here and I can show you what that looks like. So standard keyboard here for the Amazon Kindle Fire. It works great. I haven't had any problems with, with accuracy or anything like that. I'm going to type uh, upside down here and we'll navigate to pocket now. You 
You see how fast this loads up on my Wi-Fi. While the browser is loading, you can see we've got an option here for adding a bookmark for this page if you like. So here we are with this, and it feels a little bit sluggish in the scrolling. It's still loading up some side items here, so it's not terribly surprising there. I have installed a application from the Google market that increased the sensitivity of the touch screen, thus making it uh, that I'm not missing as many touches or taps when I tap on items and I find that the scrolling is a little bit better. As you can see here, the text is a little bit small for reading at this size. If you zoom in, then of course, you know, the text becomes easier to read. Um, scrolling up and down is fairly smooth, but really I haven't found again that it's really the silk service being very much faster than any other browser that I've used on the device. You can have multiple tabs by tapping the plus button, adding new tabs, you can see some of the other items that you've gone through. Uh, then you've got the ability to close said tabs by just tapping the X. Uh, for some reason when you tap the X on the last web browser it doesn't then to open up a new tab, it just closes the web altogether. The content that's available through, say, video or otherwise, and if you've got a Prime subscription, there's a lot of video content that you can watch for free. Same thing with books. If you're a Prime member, then there are books that you can check out for free. I'm just going to go in here and find one Kindle Owner's Lending Library here, and I'm going to say Fiction. And I can see the list of items here. And if I want to check this book out for this month, and you can only check out one book per month, I can just go right here and say borrow for free. And it's processing my borrow right now. And I can return this book here because I'm done with it. Now, the only problem is that you only get one per month. So if you download a small short story, which is what I did before in the middle of the month, and you finish it in 15 minutes, then you have to wait till the month cycle is over in order to be able to borrow a new book. Hopefully that will change in the future, but for now at least it's a neat feature and then if, once it's downloaded then you can move right into the Kindle app, which I've got set here to black text or black background with white text, but you have many options to change the font size, the background color, margins, etc. as you deem fit. And then just tapping on the screen moves you back and forth, or you can slide to scroll back and forth between pages. No fancy page turning effects here, just the simple tap, very quick, very easy on the eyes, makes it very a lot more comfortable to be able to read. On apps that don't have art designed for the Amazon Kindle Fire, let's take for example the uh, PV here. You've got a little option down here at the bottom that allows you to tap on this little up arrow that makes it so you can access the home menu and all of the other options. Now I have had the occasional lock up and hiccup with this device, but really it hasn't been any more different than I've had with, say, the any other Android tablet or Android device. As far as the music app is concerned, you can see that you've got music on here. You tap on it. It's a pretty straightforward, simple music player. Nothing too fancy about it. Same thing with the video player. There's no fancy features. It has a limited capability with the type of codecs that it can support, at least out of the box. So, you know, don't expect too much out of that uh, feature and functionality, but it does allow you to play music, at least in the background, while you're reading other books and then be able to control that via the uh, upper menu. That wraps up our closer look at the software on the Amazon Kindle Fire. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, and thanks for watching.